Okay, I just have to say, before we jump into all the meaty content that was the excitement, the horror, the comedy, was that not the spot that ghosts go to pass on? Because as our girl says in the after the credits scene, after she pretty much helps an old woman with Alzheimer's, she's not remembering anything, you hear a number sequence being said. At first, I was kind of just assuming the number sequence was what she was originally typing, but that wouldn't make sense given that who she talks to is already saved in her phone, so she doesn't need to type in numbers. And when she typed it in and showed it to the woman, she was finally able to open up the safe that she's been trying at seemingly for probably ever since the husband died for so long, because as the mother is saying, you always try, but you never do it. And then she was able to dress herself up and put in the little hairpiece that clearly was a gift for her. And after that, the ghost, who I thought was going to be a jump scare, thanks her, and then in the after the credit scene, we get the line sequence to go get butt buns, because Hana loves to eat butt, that's just going to be the way it is in this show. And one of the ghosts, who was the first in line, got ate by that thing, and seemingly, it can pass on, right? That seems to be the direction, and that actually opens up a whole new world of possibilities. I mean, on the channel, we've been talking about the idea that there definitely is ways to help and maybe even the potential of passing on, but for the most part, she's been petrified, and rightfully so. But now it raises the question, because that scene was directed very horrifying, and I thought the direction they were going to go was that the old woman could also see it, but because she's old, that would just be considered crazy, and I thought it was actually going to be a little more sad and depressing. So I'm curious, if maybe, if you flip a coin, it's maybe it's a 50-50 split. Are they trying to haunt, or are they trying to get help to pass on? And if that's the case, that actually leads to more development and potential with the new character, Yuria, who gets fully introduced, who pretty much gets like, I think she could probably see him 40% of the time and has like a 40% clarity on what's happening, where with our girl, she has 100%. It's basically like the difference of 4K Blu-ray versus 480p box TV. It's kind of how it feels. And that really has me excited for the remaining seven episodes because the idea of helping Ghost pass on and trying to figure out, is this something I should acknowledge or not, it's interesting because I could also see the direction potentially being in a way like the end game of the show, her finally acknowledging and most of the things that creeped her out, while yes, on a physical and visual level, they are pretty horrifying. What if a majority of them actually aren't evil and trying to haunt you, but really just are saying, please, if you can see me, this is what I need to pass on. And if that's the case, that adds a whole new layer to an already quality show. I am really blown away, and I think this was the perfect episode for Halloween, given that it's already a spooky show to begin with. There was enough creepy designs, but I think it also adds to that kind of like eerie spookiness that is the Halloween aura, and I really, really enjoyed it. Now, Yuria as a character uh, definitely does not have the greatest of social skills. I think she would definitely fit in and Comey can't communicate because she very much over the course of the previous four episodes kind of gave me the impression that she was a little stalkery and didn't like them, but given the fact that she wanted to be the apprentice of the fortune teller who ended up retiring and going back home because of her girls here, she ultimately observed for an extra amount of time, and she could tell that Miko could clearly see ghosts given how she would interact. Oh, there's a cockroach, Hana, you don't want to step on that, or she would purposely walk around, and if she couldn't tell they were there, she would just assume she's walking normally. So when she confronts her in the, like, storage room of the gym when they're putting away, like, the volleyballs or whatever, and she starts closing it, that was straight out of a slasher flick, like that girl was about to kill you. She is definitely a very, um, a powerful presence, and I think she has good intentions, but you can understand the fear. And when she starts like trying to get her to acknowledge the little men, I was kind of curious because I thought the reason why she was being so cautious was that even if she acknowledges them, she has PTSD from the vending machine and she doesn't want something bigger to pop up and it be an attack on Titan again. So when the hands start coming out and you really see the monstrosity, I was like, she can't see that. You gotta be kidding me. There's no way. Can she only see like really small things? But we've seen her see like human size. And then there was one point where you kind of get a, the impression that there's like a foggy mist, but she really is just on the direction of wanting to quote unquote help. And I think that's an interesting contrast given the end of the episode and the seemingly passing on sequence that is still pretty damn horrifying, just getting eaten to death. But still, I think I could see the potential over the next few weeks where 
she starts considering more, like maybe she starts, instead of pretending they're not there and not looking at them, I'm curious if she'll go the direction of maybe start observing them and finding new ways to not acknowledge them. Like, imagining there's, I don't know, a ghost standing right here and there's a vending machine behind it. She would look directly at it and try to get a read of, oh, is it a threat or is it something trying to pass on? Because you could see that type of potential. Or maybe Yuria will be more of the one who will acknowledge if it's something needs to be helped and maybe she'll just pretend it's not there. But you do raise the risk of once you acknowledge one, then everything's going to swarm you more than likely because there's probably a dozen ghosts at any given moment that are observing her. And then it just ties back into the father where the father's been observing ever since his death probably and even though he doesn't look, you know, grotesque, I guess maybe it's the difference of how long his spirit's been there because I can see them going the direction of the world building being when you're naturally a ghost, you probably just look like a spiritual version of yourself, but then the longer you wait on earth and don't pass on because that's what's supposed to happen but your lingering regrets are keeping you there, the more grotesque you come and maybe that makes it harder to pass on because the people who can see you think of you as a monster. So what if her father starts changing? Will she then acknowledge him and say, I'll help you pass on? Does she just need to acknowledge and say, we're okay and the father could pass on? It's one of those things, right? So maybe they'll go the direction of if it's a normal looking ghost, like a spirit similar to her father, if they're peaceful, if they can acknowledge that they can move on, they get a nice spiritual dissolve. But if they've been there too long and kind of became a demon looking ghost, maybe they have to get eaten by Satan's hound like we see in the alleyway. I know, like, I'm doing a bunch of speculating, but that's kind of the fun about this show is that it has so much potential with its world. So much so, I've never really seen it quite like this for kind of like a ghost haunting style situation, because usually it just stays as jump scares at best. And don't get it twisted, I mean, the jump scares still are very well done, but the fact that the characters and the world are opening up this much really has my mind racing in the best possible ways on how far the show can truly go by the time we reach episode 12. It's really well done, I have to say. I'm still blown away by this one. Honestly, like, this is definitely one of the more, I think, refreshing surprises for me this season, where I thought it was going to be, like, a creepy one, given that, I mean, everything I know about it, everything that I've seen about it walking into this season, you could tell it'd be a spooky show. I was like, oh, that would be great for Halloween. It might be a little weird for Christmas, but hey, you know, a cute, goofy, scary show. And then you get that emotional sequence last week, or you get even the emotional sequence this week, and the idea of how the world's opening up. This is so much more than just two girls walking to school and getting spooked. While it still is refreshing when it happens, the fact that they're opening it up with more characters, the fortune teller, Yuria, the father, like everything about this show is so elegantly well done that I am blown away that this show exists to this high of quality and I'm very excited for next week after my mind starting to race as much as it is but I would love to know everyone's thoughts and feelings and definitely theories if you have any on about like maybe the passing on and how ghosts maybe stay there and linger and things like that. Leave your feelings down below, leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time everyone please take care and have a good one.